And today we're glad to say that we're, we're able to launch on Ethereum mainnet this month. Fundamentally, the solution to this is to have a multitude of node operators, is to simply apply decentralization that solve the smart contract state change and state storage problem and expand that concept of decentralization to the Oracle mechanism, which will now be able to reliably trigger the contract. And once you apply that to the Oracle mechanism layer, you can then apply it to the data layer as well. The ultimate goal of our body of work is to create um, hundreds and hundreds of these nodes um, and to make it really simple for smart contract developers to come in and um, essentially build stuff the way that we've traditionally been building things. Right. So then the question logically becomes, what is the next meaningful step in how um, this feature set evolves? Like, what is the same similar magnitude step from I need to go through a ton of pain to generate a token to now I can script up my own token in a week. You, you value the smart contract because it's the most reliable form of digital agreement, right? There's no other form of digital agreement that provides the same guarantee that something will happen in the contract, right? So if I own a private key and I have a Bitcoin attached to that private key, that's it. I own that Bitcoin and it's extremely reliable, extremely deterministic. Can I make a contract, can I make a futures contract that knows about market price changes on a daily basis? so I can mark to market and have a futures contract. And then the second part of it is how do I settle that contract? And then I need outputs. I need to pay out that contract. Um, between different blockchain protocols. And so when you're writing these smart contracts, um, what you want to consider is end-to-end -end reliability. So you've got this uh, deterministic, um, immutable um, record for smart contracts. They're going to execute as they should. And that's why we trust the state change, and that's why we trust that that contract is highly reliable. And fundamentally, uh, I think what's useful now is to kind of look at the next steps beyond going live on Ethereum and just look at some of the goals that we hope to, to reach. And the point at which smart contracts can use data feeds to know what's going on in the real world and to affect real world events of value is the point when we go beyond tokens and into a whole new world of you know, decentralized finance, decentralized insurance, decentralized trade finance. If you look at the features that blockchain-based contracts, smart contracts, would benefit from, the next set of features will also create a, an, another generation of contracts, right? Protocol-based smart contracts. This is when every time you needed a new smart contract, you literally needed to go to protocol developers, they needed to write the contract and publish it as part of their protocol. How do contracts go beyond tokens, right? like Ethereum are mainly used to generate and move around tokens. So you've got multiple independent third parties operating these nodes. They don't actually know what's going on in those enclaves. So everything's private. Um, this is really good for managing uh, credentials for payments. But the reality is that there's a lot more functionality in terms of what smart contracts could be doing. And that functionality essentially depends on those contracts having access to data.